Good morning or afternoon, Minnesota Twins fans. My name is Seth Stodes of Twins Daily and TwinsDaily.com. Thank you for joining our second episode of Twins Spotlight uh, on this Wednesday afternoon. We appreciate you doing this. If you have questions, please let us know. Today, our guest on this show will be right-handed pitcher Matt Cantorino. Now, Matt was the Twins' second-round pick in 2019 out of Rice University. Uh, he had a pretty impressive pro debut in which he struck out 31 batters and 25 innings between the GCL, uh, which was just getting warmed up, and then headed up to Cedar Rapids for a few weeks to end the season. So let's, uh, without further ado, let's bring Matt into the conversation. Matt, how are you this morning? Doing all right. It's a great morning. So I hope you're doing well as well also. Thank you. So let me ask this. I know you were at uh, Fort Myers for a while. Are you in Fort Myers? Are you back home in Texas? or I'm back home in Texas. I actually, well, I've actually been in Texas now for the past uh, like about week and a half now. So I was actually got shipped out um, even while I got shipped back home, even while instructionals were still going on. So okay, like, that, but that was, what was that? I believe instructional league officially is over, I think today. Yeah, it ended today, but I was, uh, but with kind of like my plan that they had uh, for what they, what they wanted me to accomplish while I was at instructionals, is that it made sense for me to shut down a little bit earlier than everyone else. In, uh, uh, and so it, that just kind of entailed me going back like a week and a half earlier. Sure. So let's, let's, uh, well, let's go in chronological order. Let's go back to the draft. Yeah. You were at Rice for for three years, which I believe is fairly close to your hometown. Was it an easy decision for you to, to go to Rice, or did you have several options? Uh, for sure. Like, So I had a couple of schools to choose from, but I knew in the back of my mind that Rice was always number one in my head just because it was like proximity to home. Like, it was only a short four-hour drive. That That's always been pretty – that's always been, been an easy part to choose for me. And then also like the academics and their engineering program in particular was very solid. And that was a big factor in, in getting me to go there. And then like the baseball being as historic and as historically good as it was, was like the, 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 the pretty much the wild card that like really drove me to go into rice. So you were there for three years and you said you went into the engineering program. Was there a specific, mm -hmm. I guess, discipline of the engineering. And is that yeah. something you've always enjoyed or maybe even hope to do after this baseball thing is over? Hope yeah. Many plus years. Yeah, for sure. So uh, I, I was always a math and science guy in high school. So I never knew exactly what I wanted to do in college, but engineering felt like a good starting point. And then, so I kind of chose um, mechanical engineering, like my first couple of years. And I really just enjoyed it. Like still enjoy the math and science aspects of it. And then like the hands-on mechanical aspects of like, gearboxes and uh, just like power systems uh, like it was a uh, pretty intriguing to me and so I, that was definitely the right the right fit for me and so it was a uh, like it's definitely uh, I, I don't have my degree yet I'm 21 credit hours away but it, regardless of what happens with baseball whether it's five years or 20 years you know <laughs> um, I'm gonna I, I, right now I plan on going back to get my degree and becoming an engineer after baseball as well. Okay. So when it came to the draft, I know you've talked about being drafted around the range where you were kind of being told you, you might get drafted. Was that kind of a hectic day? Uh, was your phone blowing up? Uh, were you with family? Um, so I was with, uh, so I was with uh, some, my direct family and some of my uh, very close friends on the draft day. I, I kind of, like I said, I kind of knew when I was going to get uh, like when I was looked at, but my phone really wasn't as busy. Like, my first two calls were from the, the twins and then the diamondbacks and then the twins again. And then within five minutes of those three calls, I was drafted. So it was, it was, it was hectic, but like quick hectic, not like something that was like the suspense was like continually, continually building up with like these, um, um, with like these consistent phone calls. It just kind of all of a sudden nothing was happening. Then something really happened. The next thing and I was drafted by the twins. So I know that, you know, after you drafted, you, you signed fairly quickly, uh, but you mm -hmm. didn't necessarily pitch right away. Uh, you spent a few weeks just in, I, I assume, Fort Myers, maybe getting to know fellow draft mates, other Twins minor leaguers. What mm -hmm. was that initial uh, jump into pro ball like for you? You know, kind of even going and including just a couple of uh, get back on the mound stints with the GCL. Yeah, so it was a... So those first, like, it was, I believe, like, six weeks or so where I, 
it is what we kind of went, well, what was called like an active rest period. So like I was still throwing, I was still throwing bullpens, but con- since I threw like a hundred innings in college this previous year, they thought that it might be good for me to like work on some things and get a little bit of a rest period before just getting shipped right back out to throw. So the plan was always for me to go and get um, 25, 30 innings um, towards the end of the year, which I did end up doing in the GCL and Cedar Rapids. Um, but uh for the most part, like my time in uh, Fort Myers was kind of get to get introduced to the technology, the coaching staff, and a lot of the players. And I, and I definitely thought that was very helpful um, coming right out of the draft. And it definitely prepped me for a good summer on the back end as well. So I think more and more colleges are getting some of that technology. Were you at all aware of any of it? I mean, maybe aware of it, yes, but was it used a lot at that time? I mean, we're talking um, Sam, years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. So it was a uh, um, like as for like the accessibility of that technology at Rice, it wasn't quite there, but that is something that Rice has made a priority these past couple of years. I've been around the campus a little bit, so I definitely see them using it and becoming more familiar with it. So I didn't have like as much familiarity with it as I maybe would have liked when I first came on with the twins, but to see Rice really embracing it now and using it for their new guys is something really cool. And so like, I can kind of go back and like explain like what I've learned and explain like to, to the coaches at Rice, explain kind of what I learned and see the way that they're using it. And it's just, and it's, and it's all just helping me like broaden my knowledge of like Rapsodo, Trackman, Edgertronic, and all the stack cast stuff that is really important. Did you have any kind of aha moments that first year where you realized maybe, um, you know, you've always just pitched a certain way or, or put with the catcher gave you for a sign uh, did you kind yeah. of learn anything about yourself through that knowledge initially um so where i where i i, I take a little bit of pride in that I, I kind of knew how my stuff always played a little bit like i didn't have the numbers to back it up but i definitely knew like oh fastballs fastballs up it um, I, I usually get swings underneath them and then curveballs down and it, like to pair with the fastball up was always a good combination for me too but i think what really it helped do was just like like I would go to a couple like iffy sequences. So like I would use my change up in like a count where a curveball or a fastball up might've been better. And so that just really helped me like, like hammer in like, okay, if I need to get an out, if I need to do something where I know is my strong suit, this is what historically has been my strong suit from like just me seeing it and from a number standpoint. So it just all meshed together and it really just kind of made some things clearer for me. So when you went to Cedar Rapids and now you've had that little bit of information and you were able to put it into the mound and, you know, I mean, I would say the Midwest League is probably a, I don't know, I, I guess I have no basis for comparison, but, you know, I, I would guess similar to uh, or maybe even a step up from the college ranks in terms of talent. Were you mm-hmm. able to take that data and then see it in action uh, when you got on the mound in, in Cedar Rapids? Oh, yeah, for sure. So it was a uh kind of what ended up being was just really hammering in on where I needed to put my fastball and then like figuring out like, okay, when does the slider to a lefty work? Like when does the slider to a righty work best? And then how can I best implement like my, one of my better put away pitches, which was, which is my curveball. And then what we also kind of found out for that was something like, Oh, my changeup might be a little bit behind as from like a swing and miss perspective. So like, that might be a good goal to improve on um, in the off season, which is kind of what we ended up doing as well. Real quickly, my name is Seth Stoes of Twins Daily, joined by Twins, one of the top pitching prospects, Matt Cantorino. Want to welcome anyone, whether you're watching on YouTube, uh, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, feel free to send us some comments and questions. We'll ask those questions. I do have a text message that I got from uh, Mark in Cedar Rapids. Yeah. In what your thought, what you thought of your time in Cedar Rapids, and uh, apparently you uh, spent three weeks with uh, with Mark and his family. But um, <laughs> what was that time in Cedar Rapids? I try to make a trip there every year. I haven't now the last two years for various reasons. But uh, love heading to Cedar Rapids to watch some ball games. Mm-hmm. My uh, so Cedar Rapids is a blast from like just uh, the ballpark. Uh, the ballpark was um, in Cedar Rapids is honestly great. It's a it's a really good. Uh, low A minor league ballpark. The fans always come out pretty good. And uh, honestly, <laughs> my host family was really good too. It got a little hectic in the house towards the end of the season because uh, 
we had a couple extra guys come in for playoffs. So it was me, Josh Winder, Dylan Thomas, and Chris Williams, all sharing three bedrooms in the Okay for household right towards the end of the summer. But I mean, I don't think we would have had it any other way. It was definitely fun there towards the end. All right. So, I mean, uh, I want to kind of jump to your off season last year. You were able to implement or work on some of those things. So I was down in Fort Myers the week before things kind of got shut down and I saw you throw a few bullpens and I, I actually, I have a few questions just based on having, yeah. one. I think I saw you throw two bullpens. Uh, first of all, I want to ask the just basic question. What are the pitches that you, you throw uh, and throw, throw enough to the point that you work on, you know, a development of them. Um, so the four pitches I throw are a four seam fastball, a slider, a curveball, and a changeup. And, and that was, and that's, yeah, and that's pretty much been the repertoire for the past couple years or so. Okay. So when I was watching uh, your bullpen, mm-hmm. you know, it was a little different. Now, I, I, having done this now for a decade or so, I've watched a lot of bullpens, and it really used <laughs> to be that a pitcher would just get in there and throw a bunch of pitches. When you were throwing a bullpen, I don't know that I've ever seen a more focused, purpose-driven bullpen. <laughs> Maybe that was just one day, but it really seemed like every <laughs> pitch that you threw had a purpose, whether it was working on a curveball break or something. But, um, you know, what what do you get out of those bullpens and really what uh, what are you trying to accomplish? Is is there a goal yeah. with each bullpen session? So I, I found myself that I am pretty focused during bullpens. But, like, I mean, like, if you look at it from a pitching perspective, like I haven't hit in five, six years or whatever it is. And hitters, I mean, they take – they take hundreds of swings each day. A pitcher, we get off the mound for maybe 30 throws a day. If and that's on our bullpen days. So like I mean, if my intent if my intent isn't like all the way focused in on those 30 throws, I, I know personally that I'm not gonna get much out of it. So that's like a kind of a priority for me is just to kind of be as locked in as I can and like kind of like what you were talking about, uh like the focus wise, like some of the ways I do that is just really trying to set like a focus of the bullpen with the coaches before each bullpen. Like I'll try to vocalize what I'm thinking like of working on. And it, it varies from bullpen to bullpen. Like it can be a curveball or it can be a pitch focus or it can be like an execution focus, like, like more like just staying over the plate, the entire bullpen, or it can be like work what I'm feeling with like my change up or curveball out of the hand a little bit more. So, but it just kind of depends, but I think definitely like vocalizing a focus and then sticking with that and like vocalizing the adjustments that I make within each of the bullpens is like really important to me into like, into like improving. And so that's just, that's just the way I work though. So there's, there's different right ways for success. Yeah, no, I mean, it's definitely not a, a bad thing. And like I said, five years ago, it was literally just get your pitches in and see what happens. Yeah. Now, you yeah. know, I, mean, I think you were alongside maybe Belazovic and, and Bailey Ober and, and I'm like, these sessions are definitely there's something being accomplished here. And that's that's the sense I got as a guy standing behind the catchers watching. So I, I was kind of curious about that. So you were in Fort Myers. Were you in there? Were you there for a while? And just kind of walk through the process of, I mean, I think everyone was there ahead of when you were supposed to report or required yeah. to report. So that, things were going already. But within about a week or even a couple of days of official report date, things yeah. – changing so i'm just curious how that played out for you uh on the on the minor league side of of the academy so uh i i did report to fort myers early for spring training i was there right towards the middle end of january um and i was there like a what they call like a starting pitchers camp and so it was a and that was basically where starting pitchers got a little bit more time to like work on a couple focused areas and then also build up innings wise so that we would be ready to throw five innings or whatever it might be right at the start of the season. So um, like my focus for that camp was really trying to improve the movement on my changeup. And that was kind of like my off season goal as well. So the first few weeks were just throwing bullpens and really honing in on like what I needed to do to make the changeup do what I wanted it to do. And then it was also kind of meshed with like building up innings while innings towards the end so like and then right as we got started like throwing live regularly it was my first like live outing i threw two innings and like the next day we found out we were going home so like we heard murmuring about murmurs like with like a few days prior that like oh this is actually becoming a little bit serious but we never thought we were going to get sent home and then all of a sudden it did and then 
a few days later, we were on flights out. So it was quick. So when you left, were you kind of instructed stay ready or, or did they, I mean, there was really no sense of how long it would, would take, was there? Yeah. So um, we were definitely like instructed a little bit to stay ready, but obviously resources for staying ready um, vary greatly by from person to person. So I was pretty fortunate like that. I had some of those resources pretty readily available for me. And uh, so like, I took the stay ready and I was like, okay, I would be getting innings, right? I would be throwing a lot of innings right now, no matter what. So I'm just going to keep on trying to throw innings like throughout this entire process. So I never really, like I backed down on volumes. Like I wasn't throwing like four or five innings at a time, like a starter would, but like my bullpens and stuff like that were pretty intentful. Like I was trying, I was trying to throw pretty much like as I would in a game. And I was throwing like two innings at a time still and just trying to still work on things and stay ready as I would for a season. Like obviously that didn't end up happening, but it kind of paid off on the back end because I felt like I, I got a decent amount of innings like over the course of quarantine and then kind of meshed with uh, going up to the St. Paul and instructs afterwards. I want, want to talk about those things, but first I want to kind of in that interim between when you moved up to St. Paul and were at home, was there much communication from the Twins minor league side? And I asked that because, uh, you know, Pete Mackey, the Twins uh, mm-hmm. pitching coordinator, was was with the Twins as a bullpen coach. J.P. Martinez was in St. Paul kind of running the alternate site. I know Justin Willard is kind of next in line, and there's a bunch mm-hmm. of pitching coaches. Was there communication? Were there Zoom meetings? Uh, what was kind of going on in that time in between? So I kind of had a point of contact uh, pitching coach and mine was Virgil Vasquez. I worked with him. Um, he was the pitching coach in Cedar Rapids last year, was set up to be the pitching coach in high Fort Myers this um, this past season. But me and him were in touch pretty much like at least a couple of times a week, sometimes more. And just talking and like I say a couple of times a week because that's how often I throw through bullpens. So I'd always get in touch with him after I threw those bullpens, kind of tell them what I worked on. And we would just kind of brainstorm ideas of like, oh, what can we do to get this better? Like, am I staying on track? Like, what can I do to get the most out of like the resources I have? And so I would say from a pitching coach perspective, like I I, I had some familiarity with him from Cedar Rapids. So that was definitely helpful, like having worked with him in the past, um, coming into quarantine. And I think we really made some strides together during this entire, during this time as well. And again, I encourage people, if you've got any questions, we'll be on with uh, Twins pitching prospect Matt Cantorino for another, I don't know, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Uh, hopefully not too much more than that because he's obviously a busy individual. We've got a question here from Twins Takes that I'll just read out and, and get Matt's thoughts. Uh, have you been able to work with Wes Johnson in person and or virtually? Did he or any other coaches or teammates change how you pitch mentally or physically or how you view pitching? And that's a few questions in one. but. <laughs> Feel free to start wherever you want on that one. All right, so um, I'll I'll just try to leave, yeah leave that question up so I can keep on going yeah. through and make sure I don't forget <laughs> anything. But uh, I actually did have the opportunity to meet Wes Johnson when I was in St. Paul. He was actually there to um, he was there to watch uh, Homer Bailey's rehab start, but I was uh, going uh, against Homer. Uh, I was pitching against Homer in the intra squad, so he was around and he made himself pretty available to me during that time. And so he was very helpful, um, just like, like uh, vocalizing like on better ways to attack hitters than maybe what I was doing at the time, and like just giving me a couple of pointers from like maybe like avoiding tipping pitches or something like that for what I do in the future. So like that was my only interaction with him, but I think we had a couple of good conversations. So hopefully I'll be able to have a couple more in the future, in the in the near future. But it was a, uh, I would say that I. Uh, I definitely enjoyed our limited interaction so far. And then uh, and then from like a coaching and teammates perspective, like uh, like the, I would say the people that have had like uh, the most impact on me were Virgil Vas- Vasquez, my, my coach in CRs um, slash my, my point of contact during quarantine and even my like uh, my main point of contact during the starting pitching camp before spring training. Like we've been in constant communication pretty much and we've uh, always uh, – and and we pretty much like he knows like the way I tick a little bit now. So like I I can, I can say something that might make I can say something about pitching that might make not make sense to someone I haven't talked to before. But he knows like what my train uh, thought is, and we're able to really like it's just about making more efficient adjustments. So like 
like his brain and my brain were working together now a little bit and we're able <laughs> to make those adjustments a little bit quicker. And then I would say from a teammate perspective, like I got to work with uh, Josh Winder a lot in um, in uh, like the starting pitching camp prior to um, prior to the quarantine. And we also pitched together in CR. And I think I think that uh, we uh, we kind of pushed each other in the starting pitching camp a little bit because we were both working on certain things. We both wanted to make improvements. And I think to, and we were both kind of trying to make similar improvements. So I think to have the a similar person that was working on the same thing right by you the entire time trying to make the same improvements like and and to say that he's a very very good pitcher as well like that was really helpful for me during that time also all right uh we'll bring down the question and thank you very much thank you for the question and again if anyone's got any last minute questions feel free to ask those i wanted to ask uh a little bit how you found out the news that you were headed to st paul were you expecting it were you hoping for it I think there were, what, two or three or maybe even a month left in the season. Um, were you surprised? Uh, so um, I kind of got word a little bit in the quarantine that my name had been thrown around for the for bringing up in the player pool at some point. But then as, like, the season kind of ticked on, I was like, oh, this probably isn't happening. But I still try to keep with, like, my throwing program, still tried to <laughs> – still tried to – still tried to keep with my throne print. We're going to still try to stay in shape. And then like about a month out, it was at like 10 30 at night. I get a call from Alex Hassan saying like, Hey, you know, that opportunity that we were maybe saying about you being able to go to St. Paul, like this is the opportunity. Would you like to come up here? And I was, and I was all on board. Like I was just looking for some change of scenery at that point. It was a, uh, that was like five months of throwing into a net into a, and throwing to a, and throwing to like a, a, a catcher and like live, live batting practice sessions in like a batting cage. So I was all ready for a change of scenery, kind of going into inter squad games and stuff like that. So wasn't quite expecting it at that point, just because it had been so long, but I mean, it was definitely a welcome surprise. Yeah. I know that a couple of guys ended up getting released some of the minor league veterans and you, uh, Jordan Blazovic, and I think Charlie Barnes all got up there about the same time. Um, but, you know, what was that experience like? I know you were probably at the hotel, walk to work, get your work in and head. <laughs> I imagine, like you said, beyond just the change of scenery, I mean, what an opportunity to, to work with. Yeah. With some veterans who have played in the big leagues before, you know, Tomas Talese, Juan Gratterall, both have mm -hmm. big time. Um, yeah, I don't know if Jeffers was probably already up, but yeah. Uh, but also to work with the guys that you're contemporaries with, you know, Trevor Larnick, Royce Lewis, uh, those guys, it had to just be a great opportunity to get some good coaching and to work against some real people who are pretty good baseball players. No, for sure. The, my time up in uh, in St. Paul was uh, was a blast, honestly. Like just because, uh, honestly, it was the people I was able to work with a lot. So being back in kind of like a game setting and with some really good talent, um, of some with some people that I hadn't really gotten like a chance to like throw against or th throw with much in. Um, in like camp and stuff like that. So you mentioned uh, Juan, uh, you mentioned Gratterall and Talese, the catchers. Like I actually had the pleasure of throwing to both of them. And so they were both been very helpful in my time, like uh, in my time up there, like kind of just uh, keeping me like focused on like some of the things I wanted to improve on and kind of giving me tips on like how they've seen other people that in the big leagues really do that, that kind of thing. So they were both very helpful. The coaching staff was awesome also like, that was probably like one of the biggest changes also that I noticed, like, like all, uh, a lot of the adjustments that I made like in game or during a bullpen had to be my own just because I was the only one throwing. I didn't have a coach around me. So like to get around some of those um, coaches, like during a bullpen or like to be able to talk with them, like between innings on like so what some of my adjustments needed to be like, and kind of vocalize those things. That was extremely helpful also. And then you mentioned like all the prospects I got to pitch against and, like Larnick and Royce, who actually took me deep uh, while, I, while I threw up there. But each of both of them did. So it's a, uh, but it was a, uh, those were a, uh, but like those were like really good, like learning experiences. Like I really enjoyed pitching against those guys. And like I got to ask them afterwards, like, hey, how did my stuff play? Um, hey, would you have sequenced yourself any differently during this um, situation? And then, I even got to throw against like a couple of the big league guys that were rehabbing. So like Mitch Garver, um, Max Kepler and uh, Luis Arias, I got to throw against a couple of times and those were just like good learning experiences too. So I, I really like, and that was something I would never gotten just like in my backyard or in my batting cage back home. 
like it was that was something that was a really good experience yeah that's hard to hard to replicate um last few minutes here hopefully you've got a couple minutes left i apologize yeah i'm all good but so did you go straight from st paul down to fort myers did you get some time in between and really what what has instructs been um for you i know you you mentioned you've been home now for a little while but um now that's a different opportunity but you again get to face some live pitchers get some different coaching uh work with other teammates probably you know since you just joined the organization in 2019 you kind of mentioned get to know some more people um mm -hmm. now what was that what was that time like um, so like, yes, I did go straight from St. Paul to Fort Myers for instructs right there. And I pretty much hit the ground running with like still throwing innings. So like that was kind of like what ended up being like a little bit of my, um, quarantine goal was like just to get as many innings as I could. Like, so my goal for like improving my changeup, I kind of addressed by the time that spring training came. So I just wanted to get innings and throw my changeup more in games. And so what that kind of manifested in was a lot of innings in St. Paul and then like a lot of innings in Fort Myers afterwards. So I threw 17 innings in Fort Myers in our intra squad games. And those were very like productive innings. And then I threw like another 17 in, or like 12 or like close to 15 in uh, St. Paul. And then I've been throwing all the way since like at least a couple innings at a time, all the way since spring training. Like, so that's kind of how it came about. It was just, we treated instructs as like another opportunity to um, throw innings against some um, some different prospects and some get good quality innings. And that's what it ended up being. So uh, like the reason I got shipped back, um, the reason I got sent back home like a little bit before the end was just because I had been throwing for a while and we had determined that I had gotten enough innings. So in order to give me enough time to get a little bit of a break and then gear back up for spring training, like this was the time frame. And so that was my time in Fort Myers also is just, getting to work with uh, a couple new faces and then throwing as many innings as I could. You've mentioned Josh Winder a couple of times. Um, you know, I know the MLB pipeline article came out that talked about him a bit and throwing 97. And when I had Tom Hackamer on last week, I asked who has impressed him at, and he said, I have never seen him pitch before, but he might be the best pitcher I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> The comment that you guys have worked together, lived together, got a chance to know each other. You know, what is it about him that, you know, makes him intriguing as a prospect? But now, you, again, you know him on a little different scale, too. Uh, obviously, like, he, he just he just always goes about his work. Like, he's never he, – he's always goes about his work. And he's very consistent with his attitude. So he's never too up, never too down. And he's always just, like, you talk about consistently improving. He's that guy. And, like, but, like, it's not consistently improving to a plateau. He keeps on pushing whatever that – peak maybe so like even from what i saw like in when we pitched um with each other a lot in spring training camp like I, I didn't get to see him much in uh i didn't get to see him at all during quarantine but he improved even more than what he was at um at spring training also so it's just his ability to keep on pushing himself i think and he just keeps on improving whatever he's got and so i mean it's just impressive to watch honestly you made the comment that now uh, you've got a little bit of a time to, to rest your arm, to maybe get away from, uh, you know, two bullpens a week or whatever it is. Um, you know, what is your your typical? I mean, I, it's, I assume last year you had a plan, and now this year you mm -hmm. have a plan, even though I don't know that we know for sure what's happening in 2021. But when do you start ramping things up uh, for for the 2021 season? Um, so I'll start throwing again in about uh, four and a half weeks, like like throwing a baseball again. And I think uh, so I kind of made clear like my off season goal and like season goal was implementing like was like improving like the movement of my change up, which was I was kind of which I was fortunate to be able to figure out how to do. And so now I think this off season goal is a little bit even more geared in on like the curveball and continuing to throw more strikes with it and continuing to figure out how to be as consistent with it so I can so I can really I can really rely on each of my four pitches at any point in, in the outing. So we have um, me and the coaching staff will come up with a couple of ideas um, to do that. It's not like I'm just saying like, oh, I'm going to do this and like I don't have any idea of how to do it. So we definitely have like a couple ideas of what to do whenever I get started throwing off the mound again. But uh, as for right now, it's pretty it's uh, I'm just taking I'm enjoying like these few weeks off. I'll start lifting here next week. I'll start 
um, lifting here next week, but um, a, a few more weeks off from throwing is always good too. So what does, I guess, getting away from baseball mean for Matt Cantorino? What, uh, what types of uh, activities do you enjoy doing uh, away from the game of, of baseball? Um, so uh, I'm a, I, I, like I said, I've spent most of this time in Texas. I've gone between Dallas and Houston. So I have my family in the Dallas area and I obviously have, and then I have rice in Houston. I also have my girlfriend that I uh, visit here. So um, as for things I do, I play, uh, I play video games like that. Not, not too surprising. I play a little bit of League of Legends, if you've heard of it. Um, then also what I do is I, uh, like me and, me and my girlfriend, we uh, we go to like state parks and stuff like that and walk around those areas. And uh, other than that, it's like I haven't had two weeks off of doing nothing over a year. So I, I just needed a little time just to decompress. So it's just doing something that's not baseball, honestly, is pretty much the main thing. So even with this quote unquote missed year, you're 22, you'll be 23 in uh, a couple months here. Yeah. I'm still quite young on the prospects. Uh, status, but have you given thought? I mean, if, if if you play this year, you probably would have pitched at least in Fort Myers, maybe a chance at Double A. Um, have you given any thought to what it would mean? I mean, you got to put a uniform on in St. Paul. You get to put a uniform on, but in St. Paul it was a little different. You're literally yeah. across the street from getting an opportunity. Have you had a chance to give thought to what it would mean to you to put on a big league uniform? Oh, it's it's crossed my. It, that thought has crossed my mind ever since I've been drafted with the twins. So it's, uh, I've been, I'm really looking forward to that moment whenever it might be. And so I just like, whether it's next year or the year after or whatever, like I'm just going to keep on trying to improve on, at the pace that I know I can. And like, like that's the goal, obviously like is to, is to, well, that's not the final goal, but that's one of my main goals is to be able to get up there as quick as I can and become like a contributing member to the Minnesota twins at the highest level I can. So it's a, uh, like, I mean, it's, it's, it would be a dream come true. I guess last question, I'll let you go here, but uh, Rice University, Tyler Duffy, did you know him at all before the draft? Did he kind of come back? Have you ever talked to him? Have you talked to him since, since being drafted? <laughs> um, so uh, obviously I knew of Tyler Duffy. He's a, he's a, he's a pretty common name uh, among Rice baseball. So uh I did get the chance to meet him like whenever I first signed and he had reached out a couple of times into like um, via text. So we haven't spoken super recently, but like to be able to see like the kind of success that he's had the past couple of years is like great for rice baseball. And, and it's obviously a great thing to look up to, like trying to kind of model that same path a little bit. So obviously it's uh, obviously like he's one of the best relievers in the game. So that's anytime you can say that about someone is they're doing something right. Absolutely. Hey, Matt, thanks so much for doing this. I apologize for going a little longer than we had said or I had said, but uh, that's pretty typical for me because I, <laughs> I could talk about this stuff all day and enjoy listening to you too. But um, congratulations on, on well, getting drafted, being pro, but also getting that opportunity in uh, at the alternate site in St. Paul. And obviously uh, being a prospect uh, is pretty exciting, I imagine. And, and we wish you a great off season and, uh, Stick around for a minute after we close this off, but uh, thank you again for doing this. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you very much. I appreciate you as well. All right. Everyone, thanks for listening. Thanks for the questions and comments. Uh, again, this will be available on the Twins Daily social media platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. We'll also uh, upload it to the Twins Daily podcast, which you can find wherever you uh, find your podcast. Uh, thank you again. Thanks to Matt Cantorino. And uh, have yourselves a great week. And, uh, uh, by the way, we'll be back with a, a new episode of Offseason Live tomorrow night, Thursday night at 8 o'clock Central Time. I'll take over for Nick, uh, whose birthday is tomorrow, and we'll be talking about potential free agents starting pitchers. So uh, now that the World Series is complete, we'll be talking uh, free agency. So, And then on Friday, uh, we'll be back with another Twin Spotlight. So be sure to check that out. Thanks again. Have yourselves a great day.